Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Just Another Kill Team Podcast, where we bring someone else's scene to you. In this case, we're bringing the Baltimore scene to you, where today we've got Eric from Plasma Spam. And your regularly scheduled co-host, Travis. And of course, I'm Jay Fay. Eric. Hello, I'm Eric. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me on the podcast. Yeah, we're happy to have you. We're uh, bringing you on so that you can help uh, talk up your upcoming Golden Ticket GT, right? Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, really want to give you guys a shout out to the Rats crew up in New York for hosting this for the Salt City GT. Um, it will be the 8th and the 9th, and it will be a 6 uh game tournament over two days between saturday and sunday uh it will be in syracuse new york in the marriott downtown uh resort um one thing that the owner wanted me to tell you guys right away if you're thinking about reserving a room please reserve it as soon as possible because after june 15th the rooms will not be reserved anymore. So please, if you haven't gotten your ticket or your room yet, please do so as soon as possible. Ooh, unfortunately, we're releasing this on June 19th, so that might be a little bit too late. Whoa. But actually, if you're listening on the 19th and you haven't gotten it, this is your shout out that maybe you got to yes. go run off and do that. You're um, going to have to fire up the uh, the time machine and get back and get those tickets for Salt City and the hotel rooms. And hey, even if it's not reserved, you can still swoop in and get one of these. It's just fair game for other people. Uh, you said the 8th and the 9th. You were talking about July and we're talking about 2023, right? For, speaking of time travelers, anyone that's listening from, uh, I don't know, January of 2025, because obviously people are going to still be listening to this. Uh, this tournament is July 8th and 9th of 2023. It's going to be tight. It's a golden ticket. That means if you win it, you get all expenses paid, question mark, to the cool guy tournament. Uh, I, at the end of November, right? Yes, in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm not sure whether if it is a silver or a gold ticket, the difference between those two. I'm sure you guys know already, but for some listeners, if you win a gold ticket, everything is paid for. If you win a silver, you get to go, but you still need to pay for your expenses. Yeah, hopefully it's like, a, you know, partially gold, like gold leaf. You know, maybe you'll yeah. get a flight or something if the if there's enough attendees. Yes, any saved money is good money. You know. How did you uh, end up getting tapped to run the Salt City GT? Because this is a first time entry on the Kill Team scene for them, right? Yes, um, they have done it for years for 40K and Age of Sigmar. I believe it is uh, the 13th Legion Death or Glory group. They've done it for many years. They've always been successful. But they reached out to Shane from Command Point and Ryan from Command Point, and they sent me a message along. They sent other TOs out since they knew that they were running their own local scenes, whether to apply and just send an email to Brian to make sure whether if – they wanted to support it or if they actually wanted to run it and so that's how i was brought into it so you got tapped for a uh, friend of the channel shane <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yep. and he tapped all the local I, so for for reference he also messaged me and asked if i was interested because i'm doing aco uh, which will have been in the past by the time this comes out i really didn't have the time so i'm glad that you were able to take up the mantle and run another golden ticket event in the Northeast. Cause now we have what five of them throughout the year. Yeah, that's insane. Uh, uh, first of all, anybody thinking of going to ACO for Travis, please do. Travis is a great TO. He's a really nice guy in their group has really helped to expand not only the game of kill team, but the community in general since they started. So please check it out. Man, we're really going out to all the time travelers, this one. It's going to be a time traveler special. If anyone is listening to this from the future, please send us the new kill teams. <laughs> Just not human kill teams, please. Just yeah, please, please send us the Eldar list ahead of time so that we can make our plans. Yes. Speaking of, uh, you know, your local scene, you're from what I remember, you're the head TO for the Baltimore scene at this point. Have you always been the head TO or did that kind of come about organically more recently? Like, tell us about Baltimore. Uh, so 
Uh, to, to answer your question, honestly, um, I would say Ben Cash is actually the main head TO of Baltimore, Maryland. He is also a top kill team player. He is the one that has helped run uh, Nova and also, I believe, Adepticon and just now uh, Kansas City Open, I believe. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that was the case. So if anything, I'm under his wing for sure. Um, I helped do all the local events, but if it was like just the big events, then it's definitely Ben. But um, Baltimore is a small place. Uh, if you've ever watched The Wire, that kind of uh, sums it up in the city for sure. There's some wonderful places on the outside of the city and inside the city too. But um, where Plasma Spam is from is actually a small city called Timonium, about 20 minutes outside of Baltimore City. So how many players are in your local scene? What's your local shop like? How many uh, attendees do you have? Are you still, is your scene still like healthy? Are you happy with uh, where things are at? I am happy where things are at. It is healthy. Uh, I remember just hearing you yesterday when uh, once once upon a, no, Kill Team Casuals, I'm sorry, that you said that oh, you meet with your friends once a week. That's the same thing with Plasma Spam. Every Tuesday night, we meet at Titan to play uh, more of uh, relaxing, not as competitive, to try out new uh, rosters, lists, et cetera, factions. And the community has grown since, uh, grown since we started to do that. Um, overall, uh, Plasma Spam has stayed around 12 to 14 players. It didn't start out that way. We started out as five to six. And then as we've continued going to events, we've just made friends that are now more of family. And we've just introduced them into the uh, the group, not only because they play good, but because we have such a close uh, relationship to them. That sounds very cool. So you've got a family up there. Plasma Spam is one of the more competitive teams in the U.S. As far as uh, the U.S. teams go, I think there's Plasma Spam, Bats, Kel team. I mean, the Rats are technically a competitive team, but I, I don't think any of us have been really pushing it this year. Most of our attention is focused on the New York Open, too. So not as much time for the competition this year. Do not believe him. Do not believe him. The Rats are just as good. Do not. Do not. No, I'm not falling for that. So your scene, <laughs> you guys have been playing. Some of your members started playing in 2018, if I remember, right? Yes. Um, myself, uh, Daniel Valente, uh, Ryan Wilfong, uh, Janice, and then also a friend that unfortunately passed away, um, Stefan. Those were the main five. Uh, there was also one more known as Will Blood that you might have met at Kill Team Open 2. Uh, those were the main uh, Plasma Spam members that actually our name before was known as a 40K School of Driving, which were just uh, when we were originally thinking of the logo, it was going to be three rhinos on top of each other because you do that back in 40K to hide your guys because we originally started playing 40K. And then, yeah, so that's that's the original Plasma Spam group was actually a 40K School of Driving. So it sounds like you guys are more of a team and like do the tournaments bring in new players or are most or a lot of the turns in the Baltimore area kind of plasma spam meetups really? Oh man. So unfortunately it's, it's a mix. Sometimes it will be literally 12 plasma spam members and then like five or six people that are new or thinking of getting into kill team. And then other times like for Christmas, it was a whole bunch of people from Virginia, Pennsylvania, and then just a couple of Plasma Spam members. So it's a mix. Uh, we're definitely trying to uh, have a lot more people come in, more towards uh, the Phoenixville area and also Bel Air area, which isn't too far away. They did have some scenes, but then they kind of died down after the first six months. So we're trying to reach back out there and try and get some more communities going in the area. For people who don't know, what is uh, what was Christmas? Christmas was an event that uh, Ryan and I uh, got together and we really wanted to make something different. Uh, we didn't just want to have a competitive event. We wanted to have a real uh, theme for Christmas because, you know, during the holidays, it can be stressful sometimes. And 
really the holidays are all about bringing people together, having a good time, getting rid of those stresses and just knowing that you have friends and family that are here for you. So what we decided to do was uh, Ryan and I came up with this idea that we would create light terrain out of gingerbread and Sour Patch Kids because Ryan's a professional chef. And so Ryan and his girlfriend, Angel, made like 300 different light pieces of terrain of gingerbread and Sour Patch Kids. And what we did was we said in the packet that you could use one command point to get rid of a light terrain gingerbread piece, but you had to eat it. So you could have models behind cover concealed, and then your opponent could just spend one command point to get rid of it and then obliterate that model. So you killed a model and you had fun eating at the same time. So we thought it was very thematic that way, for sure. Show up hungry. (laughs) Hungry for blood. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, so another thing, um, tournaments, I definitely know Travis can agree on this for sure. Uh, tr- when we went to New York Open, Travis actually really made sure a lot of all of the players showing up got, you know, swag bags. It's something that everybody gets. But for for Christmas, what we wanted to do specifically was have a 3D printed orc model that looked like Santa Claus, but instead of a regular bag, it was a squig as his bag. And so one of our other players, Nick Craven, made about 20-something orc 3D printed models that looked like Santa. So in case if you didn't win or or if you didn't do as well as you wanted, we wanted to give those players something before leaving so they felt like their time was also valued. Yeah, from the from our local players, one of our guys went actually to go play True. He's been he actually won a golden ticket a couple weeks ago in Canada, and he said he had a great time eating people's terrain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was shocked he was there. Honestly, when he came out, because I saw him at New York Open, and he's he he came in and he was sitting down. I literally almost ran to him. I couldn't believe that he drove like four and a half hours to get here. That was that was an amazing turnout. I was so happy to see him. Yeah, it's definitely a credit to uh, the interconnectedness of the Northeast. Oh, absolutely. For sure. I I definitely think within the past year, the East Coast has just gotten so tight, for sure, and letting us know when events are so we can all pop up and see each other, for sure. I assume that's probably how Minnesota is looking nowadays, too, right, Jason? You know, uh, we definitely it's like it's less spread out. So now we're kind of like we're spattered out through a bunch of like suburbs around Minneapolis and St. Paul. So like there's six nights a week that within like a 40 minute drive, you can go somewhere and get a game, um, which is pretty amazing. And then just between all that, we, you know, we can put together a tournament and hopefully get like a pretty big turnout. Um, We've just got like a local tournament coming up, which is actually going to be passed by the time this is done. Um, It's going to be June 10th. And, you know, I'm kind of rooting for it to be just like problematically large and the venue can't handle it. Uh, but, but we'll see. It's a good problem to have. Yes, it's mm. exactly the kind of problems I'm trying to have. Until you don't have enough terrain. But yeah, like we've got like we just everyone knows that you bring terrain to our tournaments. And like we've got people that show up with like four kill zones and like just like get it rocking. I highly rely on one of my teammates. His name is Daniel Valente, and he has four to five open boards and just all different of those kill zone boxes. So, yes, they come in clutch for sure. We're trying out a new segment today called Hometown Heroes. And since Eric has been in the game for since 2018, loosely, what do you have any fun stories about like a local player from the Baltimore area that's climbed to new heights or reached down to help someone else who was learning the game? Like, give us give us like a, a quick rundown of one of your favorite player stories in your community. Oh, man. So this is going to be rough. And I, I feel like I have to give you two answers. And the reason why is because if, if I don't say this, uh, it, it'll never go unnoted. Um. One one guy specifically uh, is Ryan Wilfong, honestly. Um, the reason why I say that is because back in 2018, we started playing the game. And just between the five of us that, you know, that were originally starting to play together, 
he and I would talk sometimes after tournaments and say, you know, this game would be so much better if it had a community, if people actually supported it more, if we got parts of the East Coast together, and if the West Coast came together too and helped the East Coast and vice versa, and then if there was a Central as well. And so going into the new the new addition, there was a lot of drawback with the old veteran players wondering if the game was going to be as good, if they felt like, you know, some people were given too many attacks and not enough saves, things like that. And instead of being negative, Ryan really pushed forth and got together with some other community members that were also helping to grow the game and created a very own tournament known as Kill Team Open that just focused on Kill Team. Uh, you know, we went to a couple of FLG events, and while they were fun and great, there, there's nothing wrong with them. I highly recommend to go to ACO. Please do. But, like, the, the, re the rewards and the prizes weren't selected in the past as much as it could have been compared to other games. And so Ryan putting that emphasis forward into just, hey, just a weekend of people playing Kill Team, coming together, having a good time. I think that's what really sparked the East Coast community because that's when we met you guys and we met the Rats. We met you, we met Layla, we met um, George. We met a bunch of other people from the East Coast that were getting in the top 16 that year. And then... I mean, just look at it now. We just had Kill Team Open 2. We had you guys last November hosting New York Open. Now you're hosting ACO. I mean, it's just crazy in just a little bit more than a year how much just a couple of people have really put together to help grow the community. So if there, if there was a hometown hero for the game i would i would say from baltimore it's definitely ryan wolfong um but from our from our store specifically the, there was a player that didn't know how to do anything literally in the game and was super nervous his, his name is also coincidentally ryan and <laughs> <laughs> he got third in the doubles event with me and he carried me like i didn't do anything good in that doubles event and he did everything and i couldn't believe how much of an advancement he had in the game in just a couple of months from practicing uh ryan some of the garrett's um also dan and jeremy so i really i really think for um a david versus goliath uh that ryan was definitely david for sure and i was surprised that he did so well in the last event Hey, that's really that's really cool. <laughs> I didn't realize that Ryan was such a big push for the original Kill Team Open, which has obviously been a big part of the last year and a half of growth for Kill Team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he'll he'll never admit it, but he was. Yeah, I mean, for what it's worth, you know, the Rats weren't even a team when we went to uh, Kill Team Open. We hadn't formalized our name. We were just practicing together, so. We weren't really a formalized team until after Kill Team Open. The first and they one. won it all. Look at that. <laughs> yes, we did win it all. <laughs> Surprisingly enough. Beautiful Pathfinders, by the way, if I remember, too. They oh, yeah. My, for anyone table. who doesn't know, they my Pathfinders were the fastest scheme that I could conceive of because they were the cheapest team that I could buy at the time. And I have a... Um, blue to pink gradient that's done with not airbrushing it was like a contrast mix so that i could have a dark blue shade and then a pink top and then i like edge highlighted them so they came out quite nice mm. a, a vapor wave synth wave towel and i also mixed in a lot of crew because i'm a big fan yes, of the yes. the auxiliaries from a uh, towel lore of yesteryear so i've got like a ta I've got a crew with a iron rifle and instead of having like a, a fiddly bit, he's got like a spike at the end so you can crew people up. <laughs> well, I remember man. just, man, like walking by that table a couple times against the Harlequins because the Harlequins are beautiful too yep. for the finals. But like, I just kept looking and I kept, I mean, the, the color scheme, I'm like, wow, like this is insane. 
for sure. You did a great job on him, Travis. Yeah, I was very happy with them at the end of the day. They suck out really well back on the old Kill Team Open um, terrain. That was a lot. Of, you know, most of it was kind of more grounded colors. So it was, they popped mm-hmm. really nicely against the old boards. Oh, yeah. So Ryan was the big push for Kill Team Open. And then Ryan, again, <laughs> was uh, where how how long ago did he start? What what teams is he even playing? Who gave him the most help? You know, talk. Tell us about uh, the Baltimore scene, how you built up Ryan to be another a David. <laughs> <It's> a- <laughs> uh, OK, um, so unfortunately, Ryan Wilfong was the start of also growing the community besides myself. Um, we would usually meet up on Tuesday nights, just the team just practicing. And then we wanted to grow the scene. And um, we just, people would walk by, they'd be looking. So, you know, Ryan would just be like, oh, hey guys, you know what's going on? You look in like, this is Kill Team. It's a smaller version of 40K, but you actually have really unique individual models instead of units. You know, each one has a very specific purpose and so you know we 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 go in slow and just talk to them and then if they come closer then we'd show them things and then sometimes we'd even have them play for us and we just show okay you're gonna move this guy you know you can do this this and this and so that built up over time specifically with ryan and so the new ryan showed up and was excited to play and so both ryan's played each other a couple of times and so he kept coming out and each time he was doing a little bit better um the new ryan uh was playing intercession at the time because that's when they first came out and it was uh recommended to him you know you should play this team because you know they're very more straightforward if you mess up it's okay because they're they're really not that complex and once you understand more of the rules and how activations work then you can move on to another team that you really want to pursue so he practiced on intercession for a bit and now he's trying votan because he loves dwarves apparently and uh he's he he was just showing us on discord earlier today you know his, his different color schemes and what he's thinking about doing so uh yeah that I would definitely say Ryan is definitely the other hometown hero and how much he has evolved since he started playing. And it's all because of Ryan Wilfong. So back to back. There's too many Ryans in the story, Eric. We're going to have to get some <laughs> other names. And is Balt- Baltimore is just clearly a place for Ryans after. <laughs> it sounds yeah, like. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, that brings us on to probably our next thing, you know, talking about players who've gotten better you've been playing a specific kind of kill team for a long time yeah so on that note uh, let's move on into the next portion of the podcast which is called niche tactics niche tactics you got you want to tell us a little about your uh, niche tactics from the compendium or we've got another compendium specialist <laughs> there's two of them now oh man uh, okay so I think uh, uh, so. Just for context, listeners, the last time I saw Eric in person, you mentioned that Comrades they're better than Hand of the Archon. <laughs> Discord blow up. All right. So uh, yes, I do believe that. Um, I'm going to die on this horse. Uh, I I really do think that individually the operatives of Hand of Archon are better. I I do believe that. Um, I think they have a lot of cool tricks uh i and a little more advanced than comorites but you can't take two blasters you can't take two shredders which can really open up with the old school comorites um you really have two good melee specialists if you count the leader that's the third for hand of archon if you go into any type of elites um even with the one that can fight first or the other one that can double parry. You know, usually two hits you're down anyway, unless if you have the feel no pain special rule up. Uh, when I played against some of my uh, uh, teammates who are also very good at the game, it's which is unfortunate. I didn't get to really see as much how uh, overwhelming Hand of Ar- Archon can be to other 
light horde teams. I feel like they do have a special place. But I think also Drukhari Comorites can do almost the same thing, but just not as flavorful with some of the tactical ploys. Um, but... I like two blasters. I like two shredders. I like knowing that if I want to take a couple more melee people besides just two, and then the leader sacrificing the leader, uh, I can take more witches and have a better invuln save, not just a feeling of pain. I also like that there can be, you know, there's gotcha moments in kill team, and I do like when if you kill a model, if another model's within six inches, the Comorite can immediately start activating and move and shoot twice or fight twice. Um, this really helped out in the beginning of Kill Team a lot. You can do a lot of damage with two AP2, uh, five, six blasters that don't get hot. I mean... For That's players that don't know, just so just to cut in here for a second, yeah. the Hand of the Archon have a special rule called Power from Pain, where when they kill a model, they can effectively get a third APL most of the time. Or they can take a free dash, or they can take a, a dash after a charge. So that's what um that's the bespoke version of Power from Pain. The Compendium team that Eric is talking about, the Comorites, they have a one CP tactical ploy called Power, power from Pain where if you kill a model and someone else is within six inches of you, you can draw power from their soul as it leaves their body. And that model can then chain activate and have a third APL and double fight or double shoot. Yeah, which so they paired like with, become surprise GA2. Yeah, and paired yeah. with you know the shredders that the comrades have or the blasters, basically uh, plasma guns that don't get hot or blast weapons with rending, they can do tons of damage out of nowhere mm -hmm. yeah so yeah so you've I've, like still been playing comrades and it's like still been your main no unfortunately um i dropped them a little bit after uh kill team open one uh i did really well at kto one with comrades i went three one and um because of the ruling with this um how you got placed in the brackets um i didn't make day two because of completed secondaries were um at that time prime like primary over scoring other things so um that's the reason why i didn't get to day two with them so i was i was a little bummed about that and then you got to remember, I started playing them since 2018. So that was almost three years worth at the time playing the same faction while in two different games or editions. So I wanted to move on to something else, which were uh, green skins and um, had some success there, too, and had a lot of fun with them as well. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the green skins in comparison to their bespoke brothers, the commandos? So uh, until recently, until the the commandos got buffed a little bit, uh, I was on a hot take that green skins were better than commandos and discord blow up on me again. But th there was something really unique about uh, the green skins roster capabilities, something that um Kill team has done recently in this edition with the developers and the play testers, as I've noticed, they focused more now on the new edition, like the old edition, with creating more of a roster setup with the kill team. Uh, in 2018, for example, you could take the same faction but run a completely different list than someone else. And they're they had completely different functions for each model and even though you played the same faction, you felt like you were playing a completely different army or kill team, even though it was under the same name tag. And in uh, with kill team, with the new edition, a lot of the older players, the one gripe they had was, well, I don't, I'm playing the same thing as someone else. I don't feel like this is really my kill team that's not personalized. And so uh, this edition now, recently with uh, the narrative box that just came out, and also 
a little bit more with the Votan. You can take like five different leaders if you want to with the Votan and then also the narrative box. I mean, you can literally create whichever Inquisitors you want, any of the cultists that you want. So th- I feel like they're definitely coming back more into the roster buildup, which brings us to the Greenskins. Uh, until these recent updates, the Greenskins were one of very few roster builds where you felt like you were playing in the old Kill Team version where you could take and be prepared for anything. Um, you could take four Gretchen, not 16 or 18, four, and then you could take a whole bunch of boys. You could take Bernas. You could take rocket launches. You, you could do anything to prepare for what list you were about to play. And it was very interesting to me when I was playtesting green skins until when the intercession came out how well the green skin boys can actually fare up against almost any of those kill teams at the time. And specifically, one of the hotness at the time was Harlequins. And um, I play tested them against Harlequins a couple times and kept noticing that the green skin boys were actually out meleeing the, the Harlequins. So, um, plus, you know, the rule of cool, you got it. There's always someone that's going to come up with, you know, fight for compendium you know compendium is just as good and when people keep saying oh no you're taking commandos you and you look at them and you say no i'm taking green skin so there's a completely different list than what you're used to with commandos and it is um yeah. you get to maintain a little bit of surprise factor which is nice yes it is it is cool doing that um taking two <laughs> rockets instead of one is really helpful Sometimes against hordes, uh, you know, one of the other things, most flamers back then and uh, even now, they're mostly five shots, but you could give your leader, the boss, a combi scorcha, which was six shots hitting on twos, and it was two, two damage. And if you gave him the boss pool, he was three APL, so we could move dash and then shoot with a torrent flamer. And that, that made me beat Pathfinders a couple times. So. And like not only that, but Deca, 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 um, with the flamers, like if you yeah. get a single crit, especially like into the dark and stuff, like you're gonna get one, and then it turns the one miss you got into another hit, and like mm-hmm. it's it's pretty savage. So, did you often it, find yourself taking four Gretchen? Yes, I loved it. Um, uh, sorry, Janice, but I, I got to bring this up. Uh. Janice and I were playing for top table in a, in a tournament hosted by Matt Howell. And um, I didn't realize it at the time, but when we were playing, uh, we were playing, I believe it was loot and it was five objectives and it was like the, the five X symbol is what the objectives layout were. Mm-hmm. And we were on our terrace and I asked her, can you see my Gretchen behind my, uh, behind my traversable barricade, she said, no, I can't. And I was like, huh. And coincidentally, they were very close to the... So when I activate them, they're, they're GA2, so you can use two of them at a time. So on loot, they were perfect. You'd move them up, move, and then you'd just bop two points right away for the turn, and they'd still be concealed, hiding behind something. And they, they couldn't even see him to, to mark or light them. So uh, Gretchen were very uh, useful. Uh, believe it or not, their guns are actually pretty good, too. Their guns were 2-3, but they hit on 4s. And it's, I mean, you, you count them out. But, I mean, if you whittle enough models down, you can even get a charge off with a Gretchen. And if you get a crit, and if they only have two wounds left, you you get to tell a story about how a little Gretchen runs in and kills a Harlequin or a Custodes with two wounds left. It's 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 pretty uh, it's pretty cool, honestly. You know, for players who have never seen a Gretchen, they're also on. They are some of the smallest models the game <laughs> the game currently has. They're. I think you can actually hide a Gretchen behind one of the kill team barricades, unironically. Yep. Yep. And it's just like fully invisible. So. I'm sure Janice did not have fun on the, <laughs> again, on the old mission. Shout out to the old mission pack five objectives mm-hmm. where a Gretchen, a pair of Gretchen could actually sit behind an objective and just farm points. And there's just really nothing that you could do. 
I felt I felt bad. I felt you know she she was play testing him and uh she just looked at me during during she was like there's nothing I can do. <laughs> and I was like I'm sorry and you know, we we were throwing blows back and forth. One one of her uh uh, the 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 relentless drone, the the gun drone, came up and killed one of my boys right away, and then my boy just didn't have anything else to shoot at, so I moved him up and I shot right back at the drone, and I did uh, three crits and a hit on a five plus shotgun. Like, yeah, woof, woof. yeah, nice. it was it was a crazy game for sure. So you're saying that greenskins have a lot of adaptability on the roster. Did you use Ludas and Spanners all that often? Those are the like long range specialists on the team. If I am looking at this correctly, correct. So there, the Spanner is the leader out of the specialists. He can take a rocket launcher. He can take the plasma gun, and then he can also take, I believe, the flamer too. And uh, I didn't really use him much just because majority of the time boys were the best way to go and just move up slowly, take the objectives. Uh, but I noticed boys were very menacing in a lot of the horde groups. I charge in after models activated and I just stay there for the next turn. So then at least my opponent would have to retreat ba- or fall back and use the two APL, especially in horde lists. Um, and in most horde lists, they killed anything in two hits because they're four or five damage. So, you know, you can go in, swing, and then, you know, if it's the end of the activation and if you need just a scratch or something, you have it available. Uh, Wa was pretty good, too. You run in. If you get two normal hits, one of them becomes a crit. That That wasn't as good after, you know, Intercessors came out. But until then... <laughs> Law was pretty good too. Um, yes, but very adaptable. The def guns for the specialists I liked a lot in the beginning, but because they didn't have any AP or blast to them, it was hard for me to take them. Even yeah. though that the shot volleys were just y- you have so many shots. Um, yeah, for players who don't know anything about this crazy compendium team that Eric is talking about, <laughs> the uh, the long range specialists on the green skins, they have a def gun, which is five attacks on fives, four, six. So it does a lot of damage if you can hit, but nowadays it's just not that likely that it's going to do anything yeah, that and crazy, like, I think, hitting on fives. The couple of like silly combos with it. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, daka, 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 if you score any crits, one of your misses becomes a normal hit. And then one of the other combos there, if they just totally whiff, they have a tactical ploy called more daka. More so you've da- got daka, 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 and more daka. I mean, when you put it together, <laughs> you just get exactly what you expect. And it's like the orcs are just shooting a f- crazy amount of shots. And you either do like zero daka, damage you're like 16 Mm -hmm. that's true so you're you've hung up your dice on green skins at this point or are you still repping the green skins in the 2023 season so i haven't really played much of them in the 2023 season not because i don't want to just just because you know i'm a little i wanted something new and uh because of intercession man god intercession is like you're going to see it multiple times, no matter what event you go to, most likely. So uh, I love my green skins. I really do. They have a soft place in my heart, just like the Comorites. But um, I will bring them out again eventually, just when hopefully Space Marines more go down. But who knows? Yeah, I don't know if we'll ever be rid of the Space Marine menace in our scene because they are by far the most popular faction. I think locally in Brooklyn, the Intercessor player count has gone down, but Legionaries and Chaos players have remained relatively common. Mm, so there's, there's no there's no real escaping the Space Marines. <laughs> I'll take Legionaries over Intercession. I would as a, uh, you know, surprisingly enough, my green skins have only lost to legionaries like once out of all the times I played them. And yeah. that was at that was at New York Open actually is when they they lost to them. Shout out to you placing top 10 with uh the greenskins at New York Open 1. Yeah, man. Uh that You're going to was... make a, you're going to make the reprisal for New York Open 2, right? November 4th, 5th. 
I will de- um as as long as there's no family thing going on, trust me, I'm there and I'm we're we're bringing as many spammers as we can for sure. We want to come for sure. Yeah. We're hoping to see everybody on the East Coast out in New York cuz you know, New York is fun. Oh man, let me look, hold on. New York Open 2022 was a blast. There was some barbecue place right next door too that everybody went to not only for lunch but for dinner and that place was awesome it was a great vibe you got barbecue they had a bar there they had sports on good music it was it was not only the venue but it was a very good strategic location where you put that because there was all these wonderful areas close by so yeah this year we're gonna be in the heart of manhattan so we'll have we'll actually be pretty close to one of the larger parks and there'll be plenty of food and plenty of things to do in that area. So I'm really looking forward to having everyone out. Oh man. And I'm sure you're looking forward to everyone coming out to Salt City next month, July eighth through ninth, seven seven through eight? Yes, yes. It's technically seven through ninth, but the kill team is uh eight through ninth for sure. There's some crazy prize support that he just showed me pictures of last night for not just 40k and age of sigmar but specifically for kill team there's apparently rings involved where you get an actual nice oh, ring or something man i'm so jealous <laughs> <laughs> just say plus the golden tickets on the line too travis you might have to you might have to bail just saying. you know for for any of our listeners in the syracuse area get your ticket i'm sure eric would love to have you out and it sounds like it's going to be a great time in syracuse as long as I don't screw up TOing, yes, it'll be a great time. You've got you've got plenty of practice. <laughs> it sounds like Baltimore's scene is doing really well on the back of multiple Ryans. Oh yes, yes, R squared. Anyways, Eric, thanks for coming on to the podcast and chatting us up about Baltimore, talking about Salt City and uh, interacting with all the time travelers that we know are in the pod. Yeah, Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys having me on. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes, thanks for coming on and have a wonderful day. You too.